If your goal is to run faster, pay close attention because you could be wasting your time at the gym doing the wrong exercises or at the wrong intensity and unknowingly hindering your running goals. This video will explain which training method reigns supreme along with the specific exercises you should be doing, including the sets, reps, weight, even the rest periods to not only get superior results, but incredibly get 4% better without changing anything in your running. I have made this crucial information as concise as possible, so pay close attention to make sure you don't miss anything. This video is referring to a 2019 paper which gathered 28 marathon runners after passing the inclusion criteria. They went on to complete some baseline testing, one of the most important being running economy and a 5K performance. Running economy describes how efficient you are at utilizing oxygen at sub-maximal speeds. In other words, if you have a better running economy than your peers, you will either feel less tired at a chosen speed or be able to run faster at any given effort level. That is a big deal when it comes to running races. Stay tuned because the researchers retested the running economy after the experiment and you might be surprised with the results. After baseline testing, researchers divided the runners evenly into three different strength training groups. They had the complex strength group, the heavy resistance group, and the endurance strength group. I'll explain each group in detail and how much difference it made to running performance but in my opinion, I think this study is missing one big piece to the puzzle. So to cram in more information into this video, I'll be sharing one crucial bonus exercise at the end. So make sure you keep listening. The complex strength group was asked to combine one heavy strength exercise with a power-based counterpart and contained three pairings. Group one was a back squat with three sets of five at 85% one RM and a drop jump from 40 centimeters. The second pairing was a Bulgarian split squat and a single leg hop. The third pairing was a Romanian deadlift and a double leg hurdle hop of 50 centimeters. The rest period between each set was four minutes. You'll see this one RM term pop up throughout this video. This stands for your one repetition maximum and represents how much weight you can lift, push or pull in one repetition. So as an example, if the max amount you can squat is 100 kilos, then 100 kilos is your 1 RM. Therefore, if you were told to do three sets of five at 85% of 1 RM, as described in this complex strength group, you'll then be doing three sets of five at 85 kilograms. Group number two was the heavy strength group, which consisted of the same exercises as group one, but without the power-based pairings. To ensure a similar workload was completed, the researchers added two extra sets. So we had weighted squats, Bulgarian split squats, and deadlifts. Rather than four minutes rest per set, this group was permitted only three minutes rest. Lastly was the endurance strength group, which backed off the weight to 40% of one RM and increased the repetitions. So we had squats, deadlifts, and Bulgarian split squats. Because this wasn't too strenuous, only one minute of rest was permitted. The marathon runners executed this routine twice a week for six weeks. During this period, they ran their usual four to five times per week, logged their running volume, and kept their usual running training program. After the six weeks, they retested their running economy on a treadmill and a 5K time trial. But before I reveal the results and which group produced superior runners, I want to let you know that if you haven't subscribed to the Run Smarter channel, check out this short video on my homepage to see if we are a good match. Okay, on to the results. Participants in the complex training group and the heavy resistance group showed a significant improvement to their running economy at 12 kilometers per hour and 14 kilometers per hour. I mean, look at these results, an improvement of more than 4%. Let's not forget the legendary Nike Super Shoes advertising a benefit of only 3%. At higher speeds, around 16 kilometers per hour, only the complex group showed a significant improvement. The paper quoted, this may indicate that integrating complex training or heavy resistance training can elicit similar improvements of running economy at low speed, but as the speed increases, the role of complex training becomes more substantial. To carry this information over into something more tangible, let's talk about the 5K time trials that were retested. 
they revealed that both the complex and heavy strength groups showed a significant improvement in a 5 kilometer running performance. So in just 6 weeks without any other major changes in training, the runners in the complex group were averaging 30 seconds faster over 5k. Now we need to be careful when only discussing and interpreting one paper, but I can let you know that similar effects have been seen in multiple studies and discussed comprehensively in respected textbooks. Okay, so now for my bonus tip to enhance your running performance. One key muscle group that is missing is the calves, which is the primary muscle group for propulsion. So the one most important exercise I have for you is heavy bent knee calf raises. On a slightly raised platform, maintain a slight knee bend while going through the up and down motion. A warning, I recommend practicing this technique with little to no weight to start, and once you get the hang of it, increase the weight. Eventually, you want to follow the same guidelines in this paper and do about five sets of five to eight repetitions at 80% one RM. Thanks for watching. Go check out that homepage video. Good luck with your strength training alterations and your future running races.